Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Jen. And I'm Shane. And today we're talking about puppy love. I'm not talking about dogs. I'm talking about that puppy love in relationships. Let's get into it. So every relationship has a starting point, obviously. Yeah. And that starting point is that puppy love stage. Woo yeah, that stage right there is fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It is it's very fresh. And yeah. I think that's the reason why that puppy love stage is is one of a kind. It's only it only happens at the very beginning of the relationship and it yeah. only lasts how, how long would you say it lasts? I mean, it varies, but I say it can last anywhere from a few months up until the first year, honestly. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say six months to a year is that puppy love stage. Yeah. I mean, at that stage, everything is so new. It's filled with first. So your first few dates, you know, yep. your first time trying new things together. Your A lot of new experiences happen in the first six months to a year because you're trying to do everything to get to know your partner. I mean, you should already have interest at that point, which is why you guys have decided to take it to the next step. But you're doing a lot of new things to get to know each other on a deeper level. Yeah. And so there's a lot of first and there's a lot of excitement behind it because you want to try all of these new things with this partner in the very beginning. So, And I think it's because it's natural for humans, for, for, for men and women, people will like new. People like new experiences, yeah. new cars, new clothes. Oh, so yeah. So everybody's attracted to new, new, new. Yeah, think so, about, oh, go ahead. So when you get into that new relationship, it's like, oh, man, like, man, I want to I want to know everything about this person. Yeah. I, wa I want to yeah. I want to experience that first date. I want to experience going to do fun activities, Ac activities going to the movies yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. And an example, I don't know if this is the appropriate example, but I'm I'm going to say it anyway. So. It's like the first week of school. Mm. The fits are fresh. You got it <laughs> laid out. You already yeah, know what true. you're wearing the first day of school. You are so giddy the night before because you can't wait to just be like, I'm going to kill it the next day. Right. And that's how people feel in their relationships in the beginning. It's like, oh, I can't wait to do this with this person. Oh, I can't wait to do that. It's like that feeling that you get. When you lay out them outfits it's, and you know you're going to kill a game the next day, it, it's kind of similar to that. It even goes as far as text messages and mm -hmm. phone calls. Those phone calls, those first couple Ooh, phone calls. Oh, you in there for hours. First couple <laughs> text messages. I mean, you're just texting all night. You could be up to 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, Same yeah. Up on the phone, too. Mm -hmm. I know. Can you imagine? Like, back in the day, we used to talk on the phone for hours. Yeah. We, we did. Yeah. All the time. Yep. And... I now remember. it's like, what you want? It's like, I'm just no, no, it's not. no, it's not. And I know for us personally, <laughs> you, I remember really you, excited about this. I remember you would say, man, I used to get butterflies of you just walking up and down campus with your sweatpants and sweat in a sweatsuit on. Like, I'll never forget that. Oh my gosh. I don't even remember that. You don't that. remember that? Say that? Yeah. You did look good in your, in your sweat. Uh, so most, wo most women are a sucker for a guy in sweats. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. looking good walking up and down the campus. Yeah. So I remember that puppy love stage that we were in, but we talk about the puppy love stage and it's very, I mean, it happens with every relationship, Yeah, but you get over that newness. You yeah. get over those first experiences, those first couple of dates, yeah. going to the movies, going roller skating, whatever you guys like to do. And then you get into, okay, I'm really, I really got to get to know this person. Yeah. It's beyond just the surface. Right. Mm -hmm. And the puppy love stage is a great time. We, I mean, we had a good time ourselves, but eventually we grow out of that puppy love stage yeah. and everything's not new anymore. Yeah. But that's not a bad thing. Yeah. That's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. It's just another level, another stage of our relationship that we have to grow into. Yep. And then once we grow into it, it's like, Man, you find a whole nother deeper level of love yeah. rather than that that new love, that, yeah. that excited love. It's more so the love of, man, I really want to grow with this person. Yeah, it's more of like an everlasting love. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really beautiful because as you transition out of one phase to the next, you really get to see your partner beyond the surface is on a deeper level. And mm -hmm. so it allows you to connect uh, much deeper with your partner. You begin to see them in 
new ways right. and in a different light and then your perspective changes a little bit and so it's really beautiful when you have the years to sit back and reflect mm-hmm. on um the puppy love stage and then transitioning into um a stage where we're connecting on a deeper level and sharing more and discussing you know things that we wouldn't necessarily share in the very beginning of the relationship right. it's beautiful i agree a hundred percent now, when we're talking about that puppy love stage for these new couples out here yeah. and for the people that are six months, a year in, maybe mm-hmm. even two years in, the interesting part about the end of the puppy love stage is that now you're starting to see this person on a deeper level. You're starting to understand their personality, their habits, yeah. how they live, yeah, their ambition, their Mm -hmm. mind state, their values, their their values, their Mm -hmm. goals. That's when you start getting out of that puppy love stage, because Mm -hmm. when you're in that puppy love new stage, sometimes you have blinders up. Oh, yeah. It's just like tunnel vision. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you're not even looking at the full picture of who this person can be or who this person is. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at all the things that you're infatuated with, that lust over love. And then sometimes in the end of that puppy love stage, when you're starting to see all these new dynamics of who this person is Mm -hmm. inside and out, sometimes it's not for the better, you know? And sometimes that's why a lot of relationships end prematurely or within a year or two years because they've gotten out of that puppy love stage and now Mm -hmm. they're really seeing some of the red flags that they didn't want to see in a relationship. Yeah. So then it just kind of fizzles out. Yeah. There's the beauty of it transitioning into the next phase. But then also, as you mentioned, babe, you know, sometimes when you enter that new chapter, sometimes it's not necessarily for the better. Right. Now, let's be clear, because just because you might be exiting that puppy love stage and now you're in the new level of just being in a relationship and seeing who that person is inside and out, that doesn't mean that it's any less exciting yeah. of yeah. being in a relationship. The That puppy love stage is, is a very unique time, but going into that next phase and figuring out how to operate and maneuver mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. as a unit is just as exciting. And we have been in a relationship for 11 years and we have never lost any type of fulfillment and happiness within yeah. our relationship. Yeah. And that puppy love stage was great, but... When we moved into that next stage, we continue to blossom and continue yeah. to learn new things about each other. And yes. that's the beautiful thing about it. Yep. And we, we also understand that, you know, that stage can't last forever right. if you want your relationship to really develop and blossom because you have to eventually put the blinders down or up. I don't know what you call it. Up, down, or whatever. But um, <laughs> you have to connect with your, with your partner on a deeper level. If you really want that longevity and you want, and you want to grow because you, again, you want to make sure you're on the same page. You want to make sure that you guys are communicating and yes, having fun and enjoying life together, but making sure that you're doing it in a healthy way by making sure you're on the same page and you know, your partner, right. I know for us just kind of giving a little context. So like he said, our puppy love stage was fun. But when we first started living together, I was so nervous because, you know, we went to college together. We would see each other in the dorms or whatnot. But that's not you spending 24 hours with a person. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, is he still going to like me? Am I still going to like him? Yeah. Who knows? Because I'm only seeing what this person <laughs> wants me to see in the beginning. Right, right. You know, so it's. It's whatever you want it to be. So I was very nervous, but it actually it actually worked out. And again, I think that we played on each other's strengths and weaknesses. We had to, you know, have some conversations, of course, as we mentioned, constantly communicating. But we had to have some conversations about just, you know, like order and how how things should be and whatnot and just understanding each other's lifestyle habits, you know. And I feel like that's with any relationship. Yeah, You're you're, you're going to go through a phase of just figuring it out, each figuring other. it how, out, how to mm-hmm. manage the relationship for both of it, for yeah. both people to be happy in it. And for you guys yeah. to operate for sustainability. Yeah. So moving along with this puppy love stage, what would you say are some of the things while you're in that puppy love stage that you're neglecting and that you're kind of have the blinders up or, or not you per se, but I'm mm-hmm. saying just people in general, what are some things that people kind of like forget to notice or forget to think about yeah. during that uh, puppy love stage, uh, according to their partner? I think 
that's a good question. Um, I'm not a, you know, a relationship expert, but I will say from experience and also just being a friend and a listening ear to them dating, um, I think it's important to make sure that you guys share some commonalities and sometimes looks can get in the way of that. Mm. Of course, you want to be with someone that you enjoy looking at every day. Yeah, somebody that's attractive for sure. Someone that's attractive to you, but... I think sometimes people let looks overshadow common at share commonality, That's share true. interests, yeah. values, yep. you know, things that are very important to you as far as your core values. Mm. And I think that sometimes people get lost by the aesthetic of it all and will be with someone that is not necessarily meshing with their core values. Right. And then that can cause a disconnect there because if you guys can't connect on that, then I mean, it's going to be very difficult to right. navigate and have a long lasting relationship. Uh, Two things that I would add to sometimes what people forget to look at when Mm -hmm. they're in that puppy love stage is Mm -hmm. their habits, their mindset. I think you have to start recognizing who this person is internally and stop looking so much on the outside or looking at what type of car they drive. Yeah, material things. Yeah, material things, Mm -hmm. what type of clothes they're wearing, how cool they look. Yeah. You got to look at their heart. Yeah. And Ooh, I know <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I know that might sound real deep, but that's true. You got to look at their heart. You got to look at their mind. You got to yeah. look at how they operate and their real personality in mm-hmm. the inside. Mm-hmm. And if it's something that can really mesh with you for yeah. the long term. Yeah. You because know? at one point, you know, at any point in your life, material things can be taken away from you. Right. And so you want to make sure that that's not the basis of a relationship. Those things are nice, but that can't like dictate a relationship because at some point all of that can be taken away. And what you really want is that foundational groundwork in your relationship. Something that you you can always fall back when you need that structure. She, she's good. See, we're, we're kind of connected <laughs> because that's exactly what I was going to hit on that yeah. foundation mm-hmm, mm-hmm. foundation, I think is very important. And as you were talking, yeah. it started to uh, come back to me. I was like, yeah. man, like foundation is very important foundation within that, that important. puppy love stage and having that relationship grow outside of the puppy love stage. Because yeah. when you have a good foundation, then it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, and it's very shaky, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. And you're, and you're also, yeah. And you're, and you're, what is holding your relationship together are things that can easily come and go like those tangible items, material things, exterior that can fade, you know? And one thing that I believe is very important. Yes. You want your partner to treat you with respect. You want them to honor you. Mm. You want them to, um, treat you as an equal But something that is very important that people often neglect sometimes is how they treat other people. Oh, you know, because it doesn't. I want to be with you, but I want to know that you're not disrespectful to other people as well. Or disrespectful to your family or disrespectful to your family or things like that, because you can be good to me. But if you're not good to other people. Yeah. That's some things that you may have to work on internally as well. And that's a that's mm -hmm. a good point, because. Your relationship might be new with this Mm -hmm. person, so Mm -hmm. they might be putting on a facade. They might be putting on some fake show to impress you. And Mm -hmm. and a lot of people do that at Mm -hmm. the beginning stages. But then eventually, you can't fake it forever. Yeah. You go, the real you is going to come out at at one point. Yeah. And the people that fake it are the people that aren't given the real perception of who they are. So then eventually, when they get exposed, it's not a good situation because it's like, I kind of fell in love with a different person. Yeah. 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 It's like, you know, how are you treating, you know, staff when you go out to a restaurant? You know, when you're checking into a hotel, do you hold the door for people? Just things like that. I'm not saying you have to be the perfect person because no one is perfect, but those things do matter. You know, you want to know that you're with someone that is treating everyone with respect because that's how it should be. So to sum it all up, Mm -hmm. the puppy love stage is like, your relationship is like a book. Yeah. Yeah. And that puppy love stage is the introduction. Yeah. It's just the introduction. Yeah. And yeah. it lays the groundwork mm-hmm. for your relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. exciting for you to embark on the next chapter. Yeah. But there's so many more chapters yeah. yet to come. And oh, they get so good too. If you put in the work. Yeah. The chapters are wonderful. You just 
you just want more. You want more, you know. So we just wanted to chat with you all about the puppy love stage. You know, it's not really talked about often. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to have a casual conversation about it. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe this video. And again, my name is Jen. And I'm Shane. Enjoy the journey. Bye.